श्रीमद्भक्ति प्रज्ञा के सवैति अतिमत्चरित्रायसिदानंदिन जीवदुखे सदाताय नाम प्रेम प्रदान वंशा कल्पतरुभ कृपा सिंधु नमो महावदन्नाय कृष्णा गुरवे गौरचंद्राय राधिकाय तदाले फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल भाई मिलियंस ऑफ मिलियंस दंड ऑफ प्रणाम इन दिंग ऑफ माय स्पिरिचुअल गुरु नित्य लीला प्रविष्ट विष्णु का भक्ति शिक्षा गुरु नित्य लीला प्रविष्ट विष्णु का सुषमद भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी महाराजली तो मैं शिक्षा गुरु श्री भक्ति वेदान स्वामी महाराज इन ईस्टर्न एंड वेस्टर्न कंट्री एस्पेशली इन अमेरिका यू वॉन्टेड फ्रॉम हिज कोर ऑफ हार्ट दैट आई मस्ट वैन विथ हिम एट द टाइम ऑफ प्रीचिंग The mission of His Holy Master Sri Bhakti Sri Dhan Saraswati Goswami Thakur, in the line of Sri Darup Goswami, inspired by oh, Sri Sachinanda Goswami. At that time, I could not come. I was totally engaged in the service of. Preaching, writing, so many things in the guidance of my guru. But very soon I came. So that Bhakti Vedan Swami Maharaj wanted to come because the guru ordered that you should go to Western country and preach in English language everywhere. And he came very soon after. Forty years, forty-three years, very <laughs> soon, but thirty-three years. And myself, he wanted. I came very soon. Oh, after twenty, twenty years. Very <laughs> good. Oh, especially you know. How has he sprinkled his mercy to me? When I remember all these things, I go about life. I cannot check myself. He said, "His senior devotees, well trained, and he said to me to go, go and get some healthy." In his preaching, I remember when I was penniless in Mathura, insignificant, no one knew me, and he said, "Send one of his or senior disciple Pran to show." At that time, his name was Prayer. And he did miracle. I never, I never, uh, even. In vain I did it. That how it is. And he gave me 
so much money or selling his house and car, ornament of his wife and everything. <laughs> but I could not know in dream also. I think thought that oh, his friends like Uddhav, Markande, Alvarna. <laughs> so I am healthy. I am really healthy. But when he became straight bigger, then I knew. Oh, now he is very less bigger. <laughs> and he <it's> still he is so. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I know. He said so. Oh, from there, what to do? Go for the power. Go for the power. Go for the power. Nand Gopal. Oh, we send Ramesh. Her story, he helped me so much. He helped, oh, so many. So many. They have, oh, Prabhu. Jala Kapar. Oh, Krishna Bhajan. Kripa Ram Prabhu. And he has Pundari also, he was in his home. Very quickly he was taken off. So, I see, when I see the wife of Buladi, Shamrani, where Shamrani? So many. Upadanda. Upadanda. Banda Banda. So senior most people. Commander back. The chariot wala. Chariot wala. So I knew that all what I am how preaching here and there. I know that I am very quickly speaking like a draw a straw. But he sent so many five, five devotees as if he had prepared everything for me. Because he told me in his last day, <laughs> I remember, oh please give samadhi, give your no own hand. Why he told I don't think? So many qualified devotees and his god brother, the disciple of Sri Sri Dhan Prasati Goswami Maharaj, present there, so many. Pujapat Bhani Maharaj, Krishna Das Babaji, you know, Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj. And so many were there. But he told perhaps his servant, his first disciple, Tunarani Maharaj. <laughs> He gave this and I did. He also told, I don't know why, that he just should help my devotee. Oh, I brought them from various countries. I should not tell the word, but he told. <laughs> I brought so many monkeys. <laughs> Really, they are not monkey, but he told to me. <laughs> because they are like monkeys also, <laughs> jumping from here to there. So, it was very kind to me. I never did anything for preaching. I think that you are all this. First he sent to me also from oh, Swami Tamal Krishna. Right? Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
always been there. What? Object in testing. And Krishna then he came in the form of Satyamandal Guru. Why it has been told that Maya Sati is very, very merciful. So his son must be merciful. Reminding Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Siddharup Goswami, tell it. And Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami is taking his bhasan and writing in Chaitanya Chaitanya. Say, same point. What is that? He donated to world. Even Krishna Ramachandra, even any incarnation, even any associate of Krishna or not, they could not be. What? All this. Svabhakti Siyam Unnata Ujjala Rasa. And that's Sri. What is it? To Sabharaj. And that mode is called what? Mandarin power. Especially to be this. And to taste. Radhaya, Pranay, Mahima, Kiddi, Sova, Taste. What is the Pranay? High class of love and affection of Radhika. From Sri Dantana. Krishna is more beautiful. So much. He can attract whole universe. But there is one more. Who can attract this tricky person, Osana person? And she is Radhika. Her love and affection to Radhika. How? Of what kind? She states all the madhuri of Krishna, that is, his beauty. His almost beautiful chicks. Crooked eyes, playing on four floors, all are Madhuri. Dukh Madhuri, Guru Madhuri, Devi Madhuri, Parikar Madhuri, Associates Madhuri. And what kind of happiness she attains by this? Krishna, who oh, has loved so much and affection for Adi. But Radhika's affection to Krishna is more superior. Krishna can taste the mood of the services that Madhya Soda and Nandvava are interested in. But what pleasure coming in the heart of Nandvava and Soda Mriya? Oh, Krishna cannot know. Understand part I am going to tell. And especially Krishna loves Srimati Radhika, but Radhika loves so much that she becomes mad by seeing even to that Krishna. There is, some, there is something in Krishna. Radhika is superior in more eh, all things. In all kinds of Madhuri, Rupa Madhuri, Guru Madhuri, Lila Madhuri, Atheosius Madhuri. Radhika is more superior, it is right, all right. But there is something in me which makes Radhika mad, totally mad. What is that? What is that? Then he thought that I cannot. I cannot realize without taking help of Srimati Radhika. If Radhika will gladly be his mood, it is his mood. What mood that? Sneh, Maan, Prane, Ragham, Ragh, Bhav, Maan, Bhav. More than that, Rudh, Adirudh, Mohan, Modan, and after that, Maan. Up to Mahabhav Krishna has everything. But after that, that Madhanho, not in Krishna. 
otherwise they will also be mad. So he wanted to mad, and that is why he, anyhow, by treating, treating, he took the mood of, intensive mood of um, marvel. And he told to Radhika, please look after me, how I am testing, whether anything wrong in me or right. And for this she became Gaudara, she became Gaudara, and she was looking up. Sometimes correcting Krishna, sometimes chastising Krishna. And anyhow he gave, gave the same thing. Oh, the service of Radhika is to fill that. Then service of Krishna. By Radhika mood, <coughs> we can serve Krishna and Radhika. But by the mood of Krishna, we cannot. If you are taking the mood of Krishna, what? Oh, you will taste. Oh, bring water, bring me, bring me, find me. <laughs> you cannot serve. Understand? But if you will take the mood of Radhika, from top to bottom. What in Bhaktivya Samish is doing in Ujjali in many ways? Rikya. From Sadha, Sadha means Taruji, Asakti, Rati, Prem, and all these things. Only the mood of Srimati Radhika. What is Sadha? What is Sadha? Oh, this is the last fraction of the mood of Srimati Radhika. By serving Krishna, by rendering service to Krishna, our life will be successful. And this is the symptom, symptom of Sardhavati, like Ravnath Das Krishna, like Haridas. Even he was beaten in 22 markets of Namati, and his life was done. Even he could not tell him. That oh Allah Sutta Akhra. Never it was. He told Krishna Krishna. Krishna is saying all the names of the God are only fraction of the Krishna. Topmost name of Supreme Lord is Krishna, Ram, Hari, Hari. Hare Radhika. So I can count Pandi. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. And Muslim. That king, so, do you know that I am king? I can take your head at once, my soul. I can do anything. But Hare Dasa I know. <laughs> you are king, but my king is king is of kings. <laughs> In our, so you should be like that. I don't know why the devotees become weak. Why? Why? We should not be weak. First are Ragati and then Bhakti. So at the time of the Chayutha, second center of your Guru Deva and Krishna, then your object of center is so high that he can destroy whole universe in a second, part of second, mm. and again he can. Yes. He is so powerful, merciful. Then why you become weak? I don't. Especially by hearing Hari Katha, is so powerful. Satam Sangam Vidya Sambhidav Bhan Sarite Karna Rasayana Patyo Sanatha Asu Apapad Vatmani Shraddha Rati Bhakti Anusarvisya Shraddha. Then Bhakti Shadhan Bhakti. And then Pran Bhakti will come. And now we are going reducing Oh, sadhan bhakti, then sadha, even koma sadha, and then sadha also. Why we think of it? It means you are not falling right. Most 
that you do it in there. Some were very active people. And after so many years sadhana and bhakti, now they are going to be neutral. I don't know why. Understand? Neutral? Why neutral? So neutral is very bad. Like my other. You should not be. Oh, Moksha, Putsaha, Nitya, Bhairya, Tattak, Kanukha, Sangatya, Sato, Bhakti, Sharadha, Bhakti. Why not Putsaha all this? Progressing like a river. Its current always works. Yamna, Ganga, always flows. If you try to bend, and you shall make dam on that, or it will flow So what starts to be like this? Nishya, Dharya. So I request you all to help me with these intravious things. And please, again, with such utkara, as we value this. Don't do You should think that your Guru Dev is still more than before. More than. And he is always in fire. So he sent his representative, me, all you should go and tell this. Mission to all and they should all be like this. Like somewhere, serving him at Brahmacharya. You know? After some time, they were serving, serving, serving. But the serving and hearing Hari Katha, remembering and chanting, some development will be there. But from Brahmacharya, they became what? Householder. And from householder, he went chanting, remembering. Now I want from, <coughs> if they have become grihastha, there should be one prasti, and then other renounce for it. Don't go other. You should back to go, back to home, <laughs> his word. So you should always remain any, any mind, remember all things. I know in this world, are there dead chance of being so much worried? As a chance is that our mind is bad, and we can give up this transcendental thing. So for material thing, you should not discharge your transcendental work. <coughs> What I told? What I told? There, there will be so many problems besetting us in this material world, mm -hmm. but we should not let them disturb our bhakti. We shouldn't abandon mm -hmm. our bhakti for anything in this world. In mechanism. Understand? What in other world? In the material world. There's so many problems, so many obstacles, so many disturbances. But with devotees, with guru, with wife, with husband, with so many persons, never us, hmm? or brothers, maybe so many frictions. But, but this is the nature of the material world. Always there will be so many problems. But we should have that firm determination, as Guru Dekha said, Utsahan Nishcaya Daya, that I will not give up my resolute determination to serve Guru and Guranga, that better I die than to give up this determination. And with very strong endeavor and enthusiasm, then we should go on in our path of life. It may be a chance that you can quarrel with anyone. You can have some difference of, uh, you know, of 
Gurudev, according to your, uh, your ignorance. <laughs> it some difference of opinion and Gurudev may be due currently. Then I become very angry. Then a pure devotee, what he will do? He will not take anything whole day night. No even water, but chanting Hare Krishna with it. This is incomplete. Yes. And then he will bet that my Guru Devi will come himself and will pacify me. Guru Dev heard that my disciple. Anyhow, he is angry. And he chanting only and meet him. And hearing him, at once he will come and be, oh my dear disciple, why do you ask me? I made wrong. And then heart will left. So why? You will give up chanting, remembering, speaking with devotees and serving. He will serve more. You remember Jagadananda? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu just tried in him. Eh? Oh, you have brought oil for message in you. Bring so many ladies to message him. Eh? And thus, oh, all we know that all high, high class of renounce order, sannyasi, or oh, such a number. Oh, please give this oil to Jagannath temple to look for life. And he took that vessel and he broke the vessel in the front of the I am not wrong. For you, who told? <laughs> <laughs> and like Shaktavama, he became so angry and he at once went to his bhajan kuti. And he locked it all from outside. <laughs> weeping, weeping. What weeping? Remember him. Weeping, weeping. One day, two days. And Mahaprabhu heard, at once he came. He could not delay it. for a moment and told, Jagadananda, I am very much hungry for two days. I am not, not taking anything, even water. Now I am so hungry, I cannot remain. Oh, so I am going to sit to take bath. Please be ready. I am coming. And what Jagad, what is good? At once he took bath. Hmm? And we think how mercifully we think more. And he cooked also various kinds of preparation. And Mahan Mahaprabhu came with his servant Govinda, who sat down. And everything was ready, asan was ready. Oh, Arthala Pata, Pata, Pela Pata, all oh, very big. Kala Pata, you know? The lips of banana, very big, big. Hmm? Of food, it was kept there. And very kinds of, so many kinds of preparations were kept. Hmm? So many kinds of. Very delicious, very delicious. But he was not telling anything, doing pranam from far away. In Kikung room he was. Mahaprabhu told that I cannot take. When Jagadananda will take, then I will take. Oh, Jagadananda, they can be me. Worry. And what should I do? Then he told to Govind, tell him that, request him, that he should take, then I will take it. But Mahaprabhu told, I don't believe. And Jagadananda, oh, we will take both. I will take But again, I can Then Mahaprabhu told Mahaprabhu, I am taking. But you should look after that he is taking or not. If not taking, then I will give up for other days. And thus, after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they both took the remnants of Mahaprabhu. So Bhajan will grow up. And why to fire? Why to fire? In a love and affection, because, because love and affection is somewhat crooked. Krishna is crooked, his mother is crooked, his father is crooked, his Vrindavan is crooked. 
फिर गोपी दामोद क्रिकेट जमुना इज क्रिकेट मथुरा इज क्रिकेट कृष्ण हरी सिंह इज क्रिकेट रति
a maidservant, an intimate maidservant of Srimati Radhika. And so that's what he is, since he's a perfected soul. In Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Leela, he's Jagannanda Pandit, and in Krishna Leela, he's a gopi or like a Palyadasi of Srimati Radhika. So why would um, Chaitanya Charitamrita say he was like Sachibama? Because he quarreled. Um, but then again, Chaitanya Charitamrita says that Gadara Pandit is, was acting like Rukmini when Krishna, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was angry at him, he was very submissive. He didn't argue back, but he tolerated the fact that Mahaprabhu wouldn't speak to him. So he was likened to Rukmini. And some people who have no uh, better knowledge, they say that he's Rukmini, but actually, as Gurudev explained, he's full Radharani who came to assist Krishna in his attempt to act out the part of Radhika. Suppose there's a drama and I'm acting the part of Radha and Krishna. It doesn't mean that they lose themselves. I'm just acting out their part, but they may also be watching as I'm doing it. So Krishna asked Radharani to please help him when he would take her bhav and she said, and in fact he asked her, if I'm doing anything wrong, please correct me. So sometimes Radharani would twist the ear of Krishna in the form of Sri Gadadhar Pandit. But because in Chaitanya Leela, his mood is submiss submissive, therefore he's compared to Rukmini. And regarding Jagadananda Pandit, Gurudev pointed out, look, see, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, the word loka is used. Loka means ordinary society, the people. The people accept Jagannanda Pandit as Sachibama, but he's not. He's a gopi associate of Srimati Radhika. Similarly, Gudada Pandit is submissive in Chaitanya Leela, but that doesn't mean that Radharani, Radharani's bhav was stolen by Krishna and now she only has right wing bhav left. Gurudev explained elaborately in Puri because first during the day we went to Tota Gopinath which is the uh, temple where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally was sitting with Sri Gadadhar Pandit and then he began searching here and there and then he went to the sand and he started removing the sand and all of a sudden there was a crown and a head, the top of the head of a deity and then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu called the other devotees and he said remove the sand and when they removed the sand there was Tota Gopinath so he ordered Kudadar Pandit that you should take care and serve this deity for the rest of your life. Sometimes we hear that when Gadara Pandit got old, Tota Gopinath sat down so that he could reach him when he would garland him. But Gurudev said this is not actually true because he's only one, he's the same age as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left this world, left this world how? By uh, having ecstatic kirtan in Tota Gopinath temple and then walking into the altar behind the closed doors and never coming out because he entered the deity. So Mahaprabhu was 47 years old at the time and Gadara Pandit was also. And then Gadara Pandit left out of intense separation, unbearable separation, only about one year later, when he was about 48. So it couldn't have been that he was old. However, Gurudev compared him to um, the wife of Sudama Brahmana, that she was um, engaged in performing so many austerities 
that she was so skinny, she had no breasts, she had no shape, her face was sunken in, but she wasn't old, but she looked old. And similarly, out of severe separation, uh, Sri Kadara Pandit began to look that way. Some people say that uh, Sri Kadara Pandit's disciple, whose name is Mamal Thakur, that he was actually very old, extremely old, and he took over the service of Tota Gopinath after Kadara Pandit. He was entrusted with that service. And some people say that Tota Gopinath uh, sat down for him. But Gurudev said no. He sat down for Gadara Pandit. Why? And this is very interesting. He said because Krishna is accustomed to sitting down, standing up, sitting down and standing up at the mere order or indirect order of Srimati Radhika. So it would be naturally Sri Gadara Pandit who he'd be sitting down for because she's uh, his order giver. Then uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he would see um, Lord Jagannath Baladev in Subhadra at Kurukshetra, he wasn't, I'm sorry, not in Kurukshetra, in Puri, and he would see those three deities, he'd immediately, his consciousness would be immediately transferred to Kurukshetra when Radharani met Krishna at Kurukshetra and she was expressing unhappiness at seeing Krishna surrounded by his new queens and elephants, chariots, ministers and so on. And so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he'd see those three deities, was also feeling in that way, not very happy. But when he would go to Tota Gopinath, he would feel that he was in Vrindavan and he would get relief from that separation. So in the Tota Gopinath temple, he would hear Srimad Bhagavatam from Sri Gadara Pandit. Why? Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to this world because he's Krishna and he came to taste the moods of Srimati Radhika. As Gurudev said this morning, Krishna's moods goes up to the periphery of Mahabhav, but her moods of Modan, Mohan, Madanakyabhav, Krishna has no idea the extent of that um, category of love. Therefore, he asked Radharani to help him taste that. So he came for that. And he learned something from the head of the department of the school for getting Radhika's bobs, that is, Rai Ramanand at Godavari. But although Rai Ramananda, whose Vishaka is the department head, who is the principal of that school, Radhika herself. So Radhika, as Sri Gadara Pandit, gave classes in Srimad Bhagavatam to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because ultimately, if you read the um, secret truths of the Bhagavatam, the beginning, when Gurudev is explaining the deeper and deeper meanings of the first slok of Srimad Bhagavatam, the highest meaning is that that satyan param dimahi, the absolute truth on whom uh, Vyastev meditates, is Srimati Radhika, because she is more superior. She's the other half of the absolute truth. Just like in our beads, I asked Gurudev about our beads, because he was telling me that the first eight beads are the eight principal gopis and the rest of the 108 beads are 108 uh, different groups of gopis with their different moods and the knots, knots, you know the knots on the beads, like the cuts and the knots, they represent the different emotional ecstasies of the various moods of the gopis. 
all of which are in Srimati Radhika. But then she manifests different moods in her own body and she also manifests different moods as other gopis. Her moods become personified as other gopis, just as her mood of pragalba or extreme left-wing uh, arrogance. Arrogance I'm using because the English language doesn't suffice with anything. Then she becomes Lalita, like that. Or for extreme right-wing mood, submissiveness, she manifests, her mood manifests as Chandravali in that way. So then I ask Gurudev, so if the eight fr first beads are the eight gopis, the rest of the beads are the rest of the gopis, and the head bead, as we always heard, is Krishna, where is Radharani? So Gurudev said, the head bead consists of two parts, a smaller part and a larger part. The larger part is Srimati Radhika. So she's the other half of the Absolute Truth, but she's the superior half. So Shrikadara Pandit is giving lessons in Srimad Bhagavatam to Mahaprabhu, or to Krishna, who wants to learn those moves. So Srimad Bhagavatam is actually and ultimately nothing but a glorification of the moods of Srimati Radhika. And that we can gradually understand uh, in Shrestha Sadhu Sangha, or in, as we associate more and more in hearing these things from Srila Gurudev. So he explained that who could explain Radhika's moods better than Radhika herself? And then I felt like that, and then this was coming out of me, or this was in me. So Radhika as Gadadha Pandit is explaining to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, um, Prem Das Babaji, actually, is a follower in the mood, following uh, Sri Rupa, Go, Srila Rupa Goswami, uh, who is the most intimate maidservant of Srimati Radhika and therefore understands her moods best. So he used to chant two lakhs of rounds, and in his spare time he would read Prem Vivart, uh, entering into the moods of Jagarananda Pandit, who is not Sajibhama, but a, an associate of Srimati Radhika. And as Srila Gurudev was explaining how Jagarananda Pandit was weeping and weeping for days without eating or drinking anything, feeling separation for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the mood of man or transcendental loving anger and remembering how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself weeping would search everywhere day and night for uh, Jagarananda Pandit when he was missing because of his anger and how he would knock on his door and say, Without you, I can't remain in Puri, I can't live. So please give up your man and uh, return to your service. I've been fasting for two or three days. So then he would encourage him and they'd both return to Gambira. So Prem Das Babaji, Paramahamsa Prem Das Babaji, was completely in oneness with the moods of Jagarananda Pandit. Jagarananda Pandit did not only uh, talk about his own pastimes with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but also tried to explain how one can come to the level of Prem and ultimately to the level of Prem Vivart. In coming to the level of Prem, there's so many things to be careful of. Gurudev was giving a series of Prem Vivart lectures and we sent out those lectures, transcriptions of those lectures, on the Harikata, to the Harikata mailing list. If you haven't received them, or if you want to re-look at them in the archives, we'll be Xeroxing um, sheets, and you don't know how, we'll be Xeroxing sheets of paper, which we'll have over the next few days, which tell what buttons you press on your computer to be able to do that. Very beautiful series. 
Or if any of you have any discs you'd like to give me, I'll put it on disc for you right away. So during these Premivart lectures, Gurudev was explaining things that we have to be very careful of in our beginning stages of devotion. And one of those things to be careful of is uh, deceit. He told one very interesting story of a uh, pretentious devotee, or a pretentious devotee means he wasn't even actually a devotee, but pretentious. And he wanted everyone to think that he was very, very austere. And he used to observe all the vrats, akadasi vrat, janmastami vrat, with more strictness than anyone else. So he wouldn't take anything or drink any water even on Akadasi. However, he'd go and bathe in the Jamuna three times a day on Akadasi. And while he was under the water, he would drink as much as he can. And then he came out and showed that, and I'm bathing in the Jamuna and I'm fasting, I'm so austere. And Everybody was appreciating him, those who could be appreciated by pretentiousness. Um, so one day, one Akadasi, when he was drinking water, a um, fish that had thorns on coming out of it swam into his mouth, and it got caught in his throat, and it was unbearable, you can imagine, unbearable pain. So he didn't want anybody to know, but what could he do? He couldn't stay under the water with that fish in him. So he ran out of the water and began screaming in pain and rolling on the ground, and everybody knew, everybody found out. The point of that story is, if you try to deceive Krishna and Guru and Vaishnavas, you'll be found out, and you'll have to suffer. So that's one N nice thing that he said during his Prem Vivarta lectures. What does Vivarta mean? Vivarta means uh, counterclockwise, going backwards. The Prem reaches such a high state that it appears to go backwards and it appears to be not Prem. For example, when Krishna was a very young boy, he would run to the lap of Mother Yasoda to um, take her breast milk. And she would push him away and say, you're so dirty, don't come, up, don't come up on my lap. And you're so naughty. I've heard that you steal everybody's butter and yogurt, so I won't have you on my lap ever. And Krishna would roll on the ground and cry and wail, and still Mother Yasoda would be like that with him, only for his well-being. So he wouldn't be spoiled, so he would improve in his character. And what to speak of the gopis? Although they purposely would go to the same place as Krishna, just because he went there with a pretend reason that they were going to fetch water or going to that route on their way to a sacrifice to bring their yogurt and butter. But even though their only motive was to associate with Krishna, as soon as he looked at them, they would look the other way. As soon as he asked them for something, they would say no. Everything he said was no. Even, you know, that one, this one mandri at the end here, at the very end, the no mandri, you can see she's carrying that plate of fruit, and the other hand is kind of holding her veil. So while I was painting the picture, uh, Gurudev was giving so much inspiration every other day when I was bringing the sketches and the painting as it was developing to him. And he'd say that when she would go to Nandagal, uh, Mother Yasoda would be so enchanted by her beauty that she would say, oh, would you like to marry my son? And she'd say, well, with her left hand, no, I have no interest. Um, and she, was, she is so enchanting 
that you, uh, we can't see it from here, but if you get very close, and especially if it's a good photo, um, you can see her braid is kind of moving because she's sort of swirling or dancing or moving. And the end of her braid goes like that, like a uh, serpent's hood. Because Gurudev was telling me that Krishna saw her braid like a serpent's hood. And whenever he would see her, he'd become fatally wounded by the bite of that serpent hood and even come to faint. She's so in, uh, enchanting. So this is Prem Vivart. The Prem goes to such a high extent that it appears to be not Prem. It appears to go, thank you, in the opposite direction. So this is Prem Vivart. And um, Paramahamsa Prem Das Babaji was totally absorbed in the mood of Prem Vivart. And he was um, chanting and uh, he was absorbed in Nishantalila when Radha and Krishna wake up in the morning. And when Kakati, the um, monkey, Radharani's monkey, would come and say, you're here enjoying, but don't you see that Chatila is coming? Chatila is coming. Hurry, you better leave here at once. So, um, he, he was completely forgetful of his external consciousness. And he was totally in the mood of a maidservant of Radhika. And he said to one of his disciples that, Oh, Raman Manjari, go and silence that monkey. So, uh, this was his mood. And he is a Shiksha disciple of Pradyumna Das Brahmachari, who is a personal associate of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he is the main speaker, uh, the beginning main speaker of this Jaiva Dharma. And one afternoon, he had just, around three o'clock, he had just completed his two lakhs of names. And he was absorbed in internal consciousness and he didn't notice that a sannyasi dressed as a mayavadi, mayavad sannyasi, had come to him and offered his prostrated obeisances and stayed down for a very, very long time. Then when he Prangdas Babaji came back to external consciousness, he saw that sannyasi prostrated before him. And then the sannyasi got up and was weeping. And Prangdas Babaji, he also began weeping. And he picked up this sannyasi and embraced him. And he began calling out, Ha Chaitanya, Ha Nityananda, when will you show mercy to me, this wretched person? And then the sannyasi said, Oh, why are you mocking me in this way? Okay, and he was praising this sannyasi. But the sannyasi said, Why are you mocking me in this way? I have none of the qualities that you're telling me. He's saying, Oh, I'm so fortunate today that I've seen such a great soul as you. Gurudev said, When we do that to each other, Oh, I'm so fortunate to see you. Oh, when, please bless me that I can have your qualities. With us, it's all lip service because real humility has its sprouting beginning at Bhava Bhakti mm -hmm. and it actually manifests at the time of Prema Bhakti. Prema is the same as humility and humility is the same as Prema. Some years ago, some six or seven years ago, I was asking Gurudev, if I could do Reiki, you know, because you can heal somebody from a distance or from even from the other side of the world. So he said, no, don't do it. That was just to me. It doesn't mean it's for everybody. But just to me, he said, no, don't do it because you'll get pride because it's a yoga power. 
and pride and praying are two opposite things. Do you find Mother Yasoda exercising any yoga activities? And yet, one atomic drop of her breast milk becomes the entire gar uh, Garbadak, not Garbadak, Kiridak Ocean, the ocean of milk. Uh, and Radharani, do you ever see her engaging in any yoga powers? And yet, a fraction of Radharani is Yoga Maya, who controls everyone in the spiritual world, including Radha and Krishna, and whose shadow, Mahamaya, controls all the material universes and makes all conditioned souls and all species dance uh, as a puppet master. So, um, Prem and humility are one. The coward boys were thinking when they were just about to enter into the mouth of Agasura that, well, if he is a demon, no problem, because Krishna will come and take care of everything. So they didn't think that Krishna was God, but they knew that Krishna is our great friend and he'll do the needful. But those, each of those coward boys could have themselves killed thousands of Agasuras, even though Agasura was 12 miles long. Each coward boy could have easily killed. And we call Krishna the killer of Kamsa, but each and every coward boy could have easily killed Kamsa. Even, as you know the story, when Kamsa was in Vrindavan looking for Krishna, once he came, and Yogamaya took him by the hair and dumped, dumped him into a well, and he came out as an elderly gopi. And all the other elderly gopis started ordering him around to make cow dung. And when he showed that he didn't know what he was doing, because after all he's a king, they started slapping him around, and he was feeling so abused that he begged Yogamaya, please give me back my king's body, and I promise that I'll never come here again. And as soon as she gave him back to his body as Kamsa, he immediately ran to Mathura. So it isn't that only Krishna can do these wonderful things. Even the elderly gopis were stronger than Kamsa. But because they have prem, they have humility, and they just think that yeah, we're just ordinary and Krishna's ordinary, but still he can take care of everything. So Prem Das Babaji was absorbed in this way, and therefore he was very humble, and that sannyasi told him he was also very humble, he was also weeping. They were both weeping and both embracing each other. This is real guru-disciple relationship. So the sannyasi Thakura uh, told his history to um, Prem Das Babaji. These are, for those of you who came in late, I'm just reviewing the last few days of classes because we think and hope that Gurudev is going to continue the theme of Jaya Dharma, which he began in Germany. So I'm just uh, sharing uh, an atom of those classes that he gave in Germany. So the Sanyasi Thakur said that uh, I studied all the scriptures and I've mastered them and I also received the renounced daughter Sanyas and I went from Kutichak to Bahudak to Hamsa and finally I reached the level of Paramahamsa. Kutichak is the, sun, the first stage of Sanyas where they leave family life and everything and just live in a hut and do bhajan. The second stage, Bahudak, is when they don't even live in a hut but just sleep in a different, under a different tree every night. And then Hamsa, Hamsa is even more advanced when they become like a swan. A swan knows how to separate the 
um, milk from the water of a river and drink only the milk portion. So a hamsa sannyasi can separate the spiritual portion of the world from the material portion. He can distinguish and he has absolutely nothing to do with material desires. So in the Mayavadi class, um, Sanyasi Thakur had reached that level. He said, but, and he said, and I was absorbed in the mantras, Aham Brahmasi, Tatvamasi, Sarvam Kalavidam Brahma. And I was looking for Ananda, but I didn't experience anything. Then one day, I saw a Vaishnava, and this Vaishnava was dancing like a madman. He wanted to walk, but he couldn't walk. He was practically stumbling everywhere he went. And he was singing Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda with tears showering from his eyes. And just by seeing that Vaishnava, I felt more Ananda. I felt for the first time Ananda. But I still I was so proud of my Paramahamsa sannyas that I didn't search out that sannyasi. I didn't follow him. And then later when he left, I lamented so much. I knew that, well, Vaishnavas are in Vrindavan. So I searched everywhere in Vrindavan, but I couldn't find him. I saw so many Vaishnavas there, and they were all mad in ecstasy, chanting the holy names of Krishna, but I couldn't find him. Then I remembered, well, he's chanting Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, so Navadvip, he must be in Navadvip. Then I roamed and searched for him throughout Navadvip, and I found that wherever I was going, everyone told me that I should look for Prem Das Babaji, that he'd be able to satisfy me and give me a full ananda and full realization. Therefore, I've come to your lotus feet, and I want to take shelter of you. So Premdas Babaji immediately invited him to um, live with him and get trained. So that afternoon, as I mentioned, uh, when he was had finished his rounds, Sanyasi Thakur um, came to him and said, "Now I have one question. I understand that um, Dharma is one." But what I can't understand, religion is one, is why everybody I've asked to explain Dharma, they all give me different answers. So please tell me why I'm getting all different answers since religion is one. So Premdas Babaji uh, first prayed to his worshipful deity Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and to fulfill the answer in his heart, and then he began to explain that Dharma is the swabhav, the inherent nature of anything. A thing, anything, is called a vastu. Vastu. Vastu means that which exists. Vas means to exist. And with the two suffix, it turns that verb into a noun. So, that which exists. There's two kinds of things which exist. One is called Vastava Vastu, and one is called A Vastava Vastu. As you know from the second verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, Dharma approached to Kaitavoja Paramonir Matsaranam Sitam. Vedyam Vastava Vats, Vedyam Vastava Vastava, Vastu Shivadam, Tapachayona Molanam, Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Kute Kimba Parai Vishwaram, Sadhya Vidya Varujite Tukuti Vishu Shushu Vistakshana. Shilavyasdev is uttering in the second verse of Srimad Bhagavatam that this Srimad Bhagavatam is understandable only by those who are free from envy. Uh, and this Srimad Bhagavatam rejects all cheating religions. It is himself Krishna, and it is therefore 
Vastava Vastu, it is a truly existing thing. It is actually reality. Only Krishna and those things related to Krishna are reality. In this world, there is only a Vastava Vastu, unreal things. And there are two kinds of unreal things. One is called Dravya, or solid unreal things. And one is called um, Guna, or unreal qualities. So the, re the reality is Krishna, the Jiva, and in this world, material energy. And there are innumerable transformations of those. And they are called avastu-vavastu. They are only a semblance of reality. Sometimes appearing real and sometimes appearing not real, but never real. The swabhav of anything is its nitya dharma or its eternal religion. And that is unchangeable. Under certain circumstance, the swabhav or the nitya dharma, the natural inherent um, uh, nature of that thing changes. And when that change, which is artificial, lasts for a long time, it's accepted as the actual nature of that thing, although it's not. For example, the natural, or the nature, the inherent nature of water is liquidity. But under certain circumstances, like when it's very hot, then that liquidity turns to steam, vapor. And when it's very cold, that liquidity turns solid as ice. So the ice is the nine-mitic dharma of the water, and the liquidity is the nitya dharma. So the nitya dharma of all uh, chidvastu, spiritual living entities, anu chidvastu, the only difference between Krishna and a living entity is that Krishna is brihad chit vastu, unlimited, infinite, and the living entity is anu chit vastu, or finite. But although he's finite, he has the same quality of um, uh, indestructibility, unlimited bliss, unlimited knowledge, as the Supreme Lord. When he's covered by the inferior energy, maya, then he is covered by his namitic dharma. And that is, I am his body, everything in relation to his body is mine, I'm so-and-so husband, I'm so-and-so's daughter. These are all the namitic, temporary, apparent, nature of the soul, which actually doesn't have anything to do with the soul. So in this way, Prem Das Babaji and Sanyasi Thakur are going on in this conversation, and Gurudev is asking the devotees uh, to explain uh, what is our real nature, what is our false nature, and he was discussing chapters 1 and chapters 2 of Jaiva Dharma. Very elaborately, he said, if you don't know in detail these first two chapters of Jaiva Dharma, which is the foundation of the whole book, then the whole rest of the book you won't be able to understand. Then, one other topic that Gurudev gave very nicely on the first day of Germany, is he uh, explained the song, Di Babali Shesha. The first half of the class, he explained why Prabhupada, as he said this morning, 
dragged him here and there to different Western countries. But in Germany, he said, Prabhupada forcibly dragged him. And he said the reason is because in his last few days, Prabhupada called me to his side and he told me... Yourself or himself? I'm sorry? Myself, no, I'm being Gurudev now. Um, and so many, now the Prabhupada, so many of my disciples will become weak. So I want that you take care of them and give them strength later on. And then Gurudev said, I didn't know what he meant. Of course he did, but this is their Naralila pastime. He said, because they were doing such wonderful preaching at the time. But later on, I saw how so many became weak. He said, now, one of the most dangerous things is the Ritvik system. They call themselves Ritviks. They're not Ritviks. Because a Ritvik is one who knows all the Vedas. But, although he knows the Vedas, he's not a spiritual guru. He's a priest for performing a fire sacrifice to fulfill the fruit of desire of his employer. For example, a king might want to attain the heavenly planets. So he'll employ a Puruhit, priest, or Ritvik, to uh, there are different kinds of Ritviks. One who supervises the fire sacrifice, one who throws the ghee in, one who says the mantras, the swaha. There are, I believe, four different kinds of Ritvik, Puruhits, priests. And after the attainment of the material desire of the employer, uh, the employer gives remuneration, some money, to the priest, and then their relationship is finished. You go to the store, you give the money, and then you get the goods and you leave. You have no more relationship. So the relationship with the Ritvik and the employer is temporary, and it has nothing to do with bhakti or spiritual life. So Gurudev then said, um, they say that our Prabhupada, your Prabhupada, uh, was a follower of the Ritvik system. But actually, in the name of following Prabhupada, they're actually against him. And they want to cut down the tree of Bhakti. How could Prabhupada, who accepted the line of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nityananda Prabhu, Rupa and Sanatan, our whole Guru Prampara, Srimad Bhagavatam Gita, how could he have accepted the Ritvik system. If you look in Prabhupada's books, in folio, where it shows everything, the word Ritvik is only there about three three times. And one of the times is in the glossary, which was written after Prabhupada's appearance. And the only time the word Ritvik is there is when it talks about the priest at a fire sacrifice for some material purpose. For example, Janaka Maharaj, couldn't get a child. So he employed a Ritvik priest who performed a sacrifice and then Sita was found in the earth doing that sacrifice. He gave him the money and then he went. Whereas Guru is an eternal relationship and based on the giving of bhakti. Tasmat Guru Prabhadyaita Jigyasu Sreya Uttamam Shabde Pare Janishnatyam Brahmani Upasamashrayam Tasmat Guru Prabhadyaita a jigyasu, one who's very serious about inquiring about his highest good, Shreya Uttamam, the highest good of the human form of life, uh, he should approach a Satguru, a self-realized soul. And what are the qualities of that self-realized soul? Shabde pare janisnatyam brahmani upasamashrayam. That is, he's heard from the disciplic succession and he's realized whatever he heard. That is, he's experiencing his personal relationship with Krishna. And just as Vyasadev, um, Bhakti Yogi Namanasi, he entered into a trance of pure Bhakti 
and became completely, his mind became completely free from anything that wasn't bhakti. He was able to see all the pastimes of Krishna with the gopis, with Nanda and Jashoda, with the sakas and the cows. He's able to see all that.